My name is Mike Collins, Publications Director of Cork University Press. Many of you may have recently seen the article in the Irish Times on the booming Irish traditional sessions that are going on throughout Ireland, even though we're in economic hard times. And I think this boom in Irish traditional music is witnessed here again with the second edition of The Companion. The first edition was 476 pages, the new edition is 856 pages. And the, the Companion has over 200 contributors and over half a million words. Um, so I'd like to get the evening underway by introducing you to Professor Michael Cronin, who is first going to introduce the book. Michael is director of DCU Centre for Translation and Textual Studies. He is also a member here of the Royal Irish Academy and is the Humanities and Social Sciences Secretary. So I welcome Michael up to the podium. Uh, <clears throat> thanks very much for the introduction, uh, Mike. Um, the poet uh, Derek Mahon uh, once said that during the Troubles, there were only two words that could clear a room quicker in Belfast uh, than bomb scare, and they were Irish uh, identity. Um, and one of the problems, of course, uh, when we talk about um, music in, in Ireland is that it's often invoked as part of uh, Irish identity. They talk about it as a kind of, of metaphor for uh, what it is to be uh, Irish. Um, to use the kind of contemporary metaphor, it's considered to be part of uh, our DNA, the fact that we're the only nation in Europe to have um, a musical instrument as our national symbol. Although, as one Y pointed out in the Irish Times, maybe this is because uh, bankers and developers um, had so long been pulling strings in Ireland <laughs> that the harp uh, was uh, a suitable uh, symbol uh, for what uh, had happened to us. But, of course, the thing about the notion of identity is it implies something that's unmoving, something that's fixed, something that is uh, static. Um, and, of course, there's ways in which music has been used for those particular purposes in independent struggles in various parts of Europe and elsewhere. And something like a national anthem is often the kind of the most popular translation of that notion of music as part of uh, identity. But there's another way, it seems to me, of seeing uh, music. And that is not so much um, music as part of identity, but identity is part of music. In other words, that identity is one of those things to which uh, music can be put, one of the things for which it can be uh, used. But when you read uh, through this companion, uh, what strikes you is not so much uh, music as part of Irish identity as music as part of Irish plurality. Um, because one of the things that uh, comes across in entry after entry after entry is the sense in which there is an extraordinary kind of variety uh, and diversity in uh, Irish music that is constantly shifting, evolving, uh, mutating through uh, time. And one of the reasons it seems to me that this idea of plurality is important is that it, it opposes or acts in opposition to what I sometimes think are very kind of lazy and dismissive attitudes towards the notion of the traditional. Uh, one of the things that through the work of uh, Eric uh, Hobsbawm, Benedict Anderson and others, there's a kind of notion um, that all uh, traditions are invented traditions, um, all traditions are shallow uh, traditions, and um, that the one thing that characterises traditions is that they're kind of, if you like, <coughs> preserved in the formaldehyde of sentimentality. But what it emerges from this book is a wholly different notion of what constitutes tradition and what constitutes uh, the uh, traditional. Because what emerges uh, from uh, the companion is the sense of a tradition that is open, that is creative, that is diverse, um, that is evolving, and above all, that is uh, endlessly challenging to particular shibboleths that may exist within the tradition uh, itself. However, it seems to me that another thing that's important to remember is that the survival of Irish traditional music um, was at certain times in our, our history, and I include our very, very recent history, uh, a very close uh, run thing. And of course, Ireland is not unique in this uh, context. It's a similar kind of problem that was faced um, by uh, the citizens of Hungary, uh, Finland, uh, Estonia, uh, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and uh, others. And in this context, I just want to mention very briefly the work of <clears throat> a man called John Patochka. 
who was a Czech philosopher, uh, one of the founding members of the Charter uh, 77 uh, movement, who died in the year that the movement was founded, 1977. Um, he died after 10 uh, hours of interrogation by the Czech uh, secret police of, of apoplexy. But he asked himself a question in 1938, and he says, <clears throat> was there um, really uh, much point in the idea of working to protect and promote um, the Czech language, Czech culture, and Czech music, given that the effects, the destructive effects of militaristic nationalism had been seen uh, in the First World War and were on the rise everywhere in uh, Europe at the, uh, the time? Was there not, if you like, the perennial danger of kind of chauvinism and triumphalism in celebrating particular kinds of, of national uh, cultures? And he argued that the answer to that question was yes, um, that there was um, a very good uh, reason to want to protect, protect and, and promote uh, and d develop and engage with uh, particular cultures and uh, languages. But he said the most important thing about this is the aim of that project, what he calls the telos, or the, um, <clears throat> the objective of that project. And he said the ultimate aim should not be denom domination, but renunciation. In other words, that the idea of developing, uh, working through, um, expanding, exploring uh, particular languages and cultures and uh, musics is making available a resource to world culture. The making available of those resources which, if you like, originate in a particular place and making them available uh, to uh, a much broader uh, audience. And this is something that is very, very striking, which you might call the kind of the liberation teleology of the companion, the way in which, in, the, in this expanded and new edition of the companion, um, there are <coughs> expanded uh, entries on uh, England, um, we've Brittany appearing, uh, Scotland, uh, France, uh, the United States, where the notion that is, if you like, constantly promoted in the companion, in entry after entry, is the notion uh, of uh, not so much of independence as interdependence as a kind of context uh, for the thriving and the flourishing of uh, Irish traditional uh, music as uh, an art uh, form. One of the things that's very refreshing about the uh, Companion is the sense in which the Companion remaps uh, Ireland uh, itself. Uh, Joyce once said that he knew about the rest of Ireland outside of Dublin through hearsay. And one sometimes gets the impression with certain sections of the, the media uh, in, in Ireland that this is indeed what, what happens. And what emerges, if you like, from this uh, Companion is the extraordinary scale and breadth of Irish musical achievement uh, right throughout the 32 counties of, uh, of Ireland, which challenge, if you like, what you might call the kind of myth of colonialism. The idea that you know, the, the villages and towns of, of Ireland are kind of cloning uh, global uh, trends uh, that come from, from elsewhere. What this companion reveals is, um, if you like, applying a con almost a kind of fractal microscope uh, to uh, Irish life and showing the breadth, the diversity, um, and the sort of the engagement of, of local place in um, providing, if you like, a context uh, in which uh, traditional uh, music and its performance can flourish and, and thrive. So what you get in the book is a kind of notion, not of a shrinking world, not of Ireland as a place of shrinkage, but Ireland as a place of expansion. The, work, the book, if you like, is a kind of re-enchantment of uh, what the place uh, is, which is based not so much on kind of metropolitan uh, fantasies, but on a sense of local enthusiasm, resourcefulness, and uh, engagement. Um, one of the things I noted in the book is that the, um, the space, if you like, devoted to the uh, harp is given much uh, expanded uh, coverage. Uh, and I was kind of reminded of a Gary Larson uh, cartoon that came out uh, years ago, uh, where one of the kind of the saved uh, arrives at the gates of, of heaven, and St. Peter is waiting there, and he says to the new entrant, uh, welcome, uh, here is your harp. Um, another uh, less unfortunate punter, uh, one of the damned, uh, arrives <coughs> at the gates of hell, and Lucifer is waiting there, and he says, uh, welcome to heaven, uh, here is your accordion. Um, now, of course, as a kind of uh, a lifelong uh, aficionado of the accordion myself, uh, I find this a vile uh, libel on the, the instrument. Uh, but one of the accordions that I go back to uh, again and again is <coughs> the Galway accordion player uh, Joe Cooley. And he was interviewed uh, many years ago by the, uh, the late Cahill uh, O'Shannon. 
And he talked of how uh, during the very racially tense years in the uh, United States, um, that music was one of those things that brought uh, African Americans and Irish uh, Americans uh, together. And Cooley's comment on this was, it's the only music that brings people to their senses. Um, and there's a sense, it seems to me, in which um, this monument uh, to uh, scholarship, which is the companion to uh, Irish uh, traditional music, is a kind of tribute to the sense-making capacity, uh, not only of the musicians and performers, but also of those who write, uh, think about, and engage with uh, Irish uh, traditional music. Uh, the last entry in the uh, book, under Z, is for Zosimus, and uh, in one of the lines from one of his songs goes, he's talking about uh, how he'd like to be remembered after his death, and he says, illustrious people uh, do prefer it plain. And one of the great things about the companion is the sense in which it is accessible, it is readable, it's engaging, um, and it has a kind of plainness or, or clarity of <coughs> expression that makes it uh, accessible to the uh, widest possible uh, uh, audience. So I think on behalf of everyone who uh, plays, uh, performs, uh, listens to, engages with uh, Irish uh, traditional uh, music, and that we're all extremely uh, grateful to uh, Finton Vallely and uh, all the co contributors uh, who have produced um, this extraordinary uh, landmark of uh, a volume. Thank you. Thank you.